We are live. <laughs> You're just going to throw that one up there? Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> it's the only comment we got. Only comment we got. We got well, three people watching. It's us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll have somebody come on in, yeah. in the chat in just a moment. Oh, yeah. Always. Is that my phone or yours, baby? It was mine. Mm. Yeah. My mom was reminding me of something. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Jim already kind of knows about it. So, hey, Big Wrench. What's up, Big Wrench? So, <clears throat> hey, I got the notification. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Well, at least you got the notification. You're you are, you are live. I'm alive. Well, so. Sometimes Amy <clears throat> Joe may say the different. <laughs> Only whenever I'm dead. So, Sogo, what's up? What's up, Sogo? So we're gonna give it a, give it a little little minute here. Let's see if we can get some folks. Nine two two crappie barbecue. <laughs> to be My barbecue friend. What's up, BQ? Notification work tonight. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, work notification. Well, well, it's it's because Sogo, you you made sure that you subscribe to K and B this time. That that's <laughs> yeah. the reason why. There you, there you go. Oh, he must have been the one subscriber I got like in the last couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna ask you how you how you on your uh watch hours. Uh just well I have I'll have to go back and make sure, but I think I just breached a thousand. So still no better than what it was beginning with. Uh, I lost I lost a lot of my hours. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well I hit my three sixty five a week ago. It dropped it went from almost four thousand to just barely over two. Good lord, you did drop a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this means you haven't been going out fishing lot, a lot. This is well, and that, and that, and I'm guessing a year ago around this time, I didn't have that very many views. I didn't have that many watch hours at the time. So either. That yeah, could be. <clears throat> so. oh, Big Wrench shared us out. Appreciate that, Big Wrench. Appreciate, oh, appreciate um, it. Yeah, those that are that are watching, those seven. Oh, we got eight in the house right now. Mm -hmm. um, a big eight thank you for being in here and yes. if you would please share that out on any of your uh, social medias social medias i start to say multimedias yeah I, <laughs> I, I, too. I, i'm the young one of this group so i have to like remind the old folks uh it's called social media okay what social media yeah, yes yeah, social media social media that's, that's that's your vocabulary word for the day social media social media there's Fish sizzle. Fish sizzle. What's up, fish sizzle? Warm weather this week. Yes, I know. Buddy. I know. And I'm going to be in the creek. <laughs> my buddy Bill, I was supposed to be on the water tomorrow, but that ain't happening. <clears throat> I, I know. It, 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 <laughs> you it, have something on your hat. Thing, yeah. And it's the wrong hat. <laughs> Jim, please tell it. Please tell this man to get that hat off. We, we don't want to see Georgia in the house. Wait, Jim's in, in the same boat as I am, son. But he ain't going to wear a Georgia hat. He knows better. That's okay. <laughs> I'll go get my Georgia blanket and my Georgia socks. And there you go. <laughs> my Georgia cup. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're two against one I'll this time. My, I'll just get my man-eating shark cup out. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Panama so. City, baby. <laughs> Chrissy Brown, uptown Chrissy Brown. She's in the house at the moment. Appreciate it. Again, if you guys will go ahead and share this out a little bit, uh, let's get some more people in here. We will be having some uh, good information here in the next few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, while we got a few people in the house, let's go ahead and kind of get this thing started. Um, as you all can see in the bottom of the screen here, uh, Mr. Jim Rhodes, um, my buddy, um, we have uh, you. You may have seen him uh, if you've seen any of these videos from my channel of him out there doing some catfishing and and uh, seen some of the pictures on social media. Again, there you go, social media, um, social and which media. in which he has caught some fairly good sized fish. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that that's who we have as a guest tonight. Um, we will be here in the next few minutes. I want to get a few more people in the house before we actually get that started, but we will be talking about how the weather, since we are talking about weather, how the weather affects the waters that we fish. <clears throat> but before we get started on that, uh, Jim, won't you give us a little, little insight to, uh, 
as far as how you got started <laughs> social media, the word of the day, um, is that, give us a little insight on, um, on how you got started and then how that progressed, if you would, into targeting the, the species that you, that you target now. All right. That's, uh, I don't know. It's one of those things that, uh, with me, it got started as a necessity growing up. Like, I, I mean, I was joking, cutting up a while ago before the show started, but uh, growing up poor, but uh, the necessity was fishing. Uh, we we fished and, and hunted, and that's how we, you know, primarily how we ate. Uh, and fishing and hunting wasn't a, a sport back then. It was serious mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting into fishing – I grew up and, you know, some people are, can relate to this and some people won't. Some people hate me for this. Um, but I, I grew up as, as an outlaw. I mean, we, there was no such thing as catch and release. And uh, if you drop the fish on the bank of the river off of a hook or a line, you got chewed out for not getting him on the bank and jumping on him. You know, it was so it was necessity. We we yeah. sold a lot of the fish that we caught. We we ate what we didn't sell, and uh, we used everything. So well, it's either feet. It's like what they say that little saying: uh, feast or famine. Well, it yeah. was just a way of life growing yeah. up, and um, I was an outlaw. I was raised by outlaws, you know. And in fishing today's standards, we would have been thrown under the jail. You know, uh, and and that's just the fact of where I come from. That's my background. Now, today, is that me? No. I, I mean, I um, people that know me today are, you know, I am so far removed from that mindset now. But it was because of the change in culture and change of, you know, I, we used to walk the bank of the river at night with a twenty-two rifle and shoot fish with a spotlight. Um, and that was the way we done it. And uh we also, you know, we got out in the river and we, I have been in the river with a hundred foot sane, you know, and, and sane coolers of fish, you know, and, and that's, mm-hmm. you know, kind of how we made our money. But as I got older, um, and as time changed and the laws changed and, um, you know, you get a little bit older and you realize you can't run from the rabbit sheriff all the time, you know, yeah. uh, you got to grow up. And, and I realized that, if we keep this up and everybody does this, there won't be anything. And uh, exactly, I, I <laughs> be pretty good buddies with the, the the guy that I was, you know, pretty much <laughs> was my worst enemy. Old Green Bridges, you know, we we pick and play <laughs> called game war. No Green Bridges, but uh, <laughs> that, that's kind of my background. But uh, getting out of that, I, I got into you know uh, fishing the river. I got my first boat. Uh, my first boat, I can't remember. It was, it didn't belong to me. It was my daddy's, but you know, uh, I used that boat and we would tie lines out in the river and we would fish all night long and we would bait lines with soap. Uh, y'all know what soap soap is. That's, you know, kind of a Mexican soap. It it had fat in it and that's how it's produced. And, uh, catfish in the river loved it. Um, so we would do what's called soap line in the river. We'd put out mm-hmm. 50, 75 hooks, and we would run them from on a, on a Wednesday night to, mm-hmm. you know, Wednesday morning. We'd run hooks all night. We'd run hooks during the week. Uh, we didn't mess around on the weekends. And, you know, right. for reason, you know, there's more people. Um, right. But getting out of that, just um, we started fishing. My stepdaddy uh, became a training officer for the state. And, uh, it kind of changed things when um, we kind of we got out of that position where we had to fish and had to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, not being dirt poor, we had things and everybody had jobs, but it was just a way of life. It was tradition and a and a way of life. But getting out of that, uh, I started, you know, coming to a more legal way of fishing and and uh, was handed a fishing pole, <laughs> and uh, we started you know, just fishing and, and targeting fish. And I grew up a swamper. Um, so we catfish was what we knew, big flatheads on soap lines and, um, mm-hmm. 
primarily blues and channels what we're catching on soap lines but we would catch we'd go to the creek you know like uh kelly loves fish the creek we would always um catch bluegill and we would carry them alive put them on j hooks lines in the river and we would catch yep. I, we've caught there's no telling how many record you know, flatheads that have been caught by us that we couldn't tell nobody about, you know, yeah. the means of how we done it were not always good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People frowned on it. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and as I got older and, and, and learned a lot more about, you know, the things we ought to do and became mm -hmm. a Christian, <laughs> the main thing is having a new heart and becoming a, a, a man of God and realizing that there's a better way to do things. Um, yeah. And, and that Down gives the ability to to, oh, to yeah. eat and carry on and enjoy, you know, you know God's creation. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now, for those of you in chat that don't that don't know, uh, a lot of you do, but those of you that don't know, um, Jim is actually a, a, a pastor of a church. He actually pastors a church, but that's not the only thing that you do, Jim, as far as that's concerned. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about more, you know, that, or if you're comfortable with it, you can. Yeah, uh, it's actually as after I, I became a Christian, uh, kind of got out of the you know uh, outlaw life. I became a you know a, a prison guard first. Uh, Eighteen years old, I I become a prison guard and worked for the state, um, done firearms training and things like that for the state. Uh, also, um, got very big into archery. Um, became a uh, a shooter for different bow companies. Then I actually went in and became a bow builder for uh, a company here in Georgia and one in Tucson, Arizona. Um, but I wound up getting married later uh, and truly becoming a Christian, getting saved, uh, thanks to my wife. <laughs> really and truly, that's my family, mm -hmm. what has molded me what I am today. And uh, that's why I fish and hunt like I do. But uh, in that, after I became a Christian, got saved, I, I felt led to uh, do what the Bible says, not forsake the assembling together of, of the saints. Uh, I started going to church some. And, and uh, you know, I wound up becoming a pastor. Um, and being a pastor, it, it kind of opened some doors for other avenues. And I, I wound up going... Uh, to school and becoming uh, uh, a hospice chaplain. So that's what I do every day for a living. And I know some people say that's the most horrible job in the world. Um, it's a difficult job emotionally. It's not hard physically, but uh, it, it is and can be very rough emotionally. But that's why I plug in the hunting and fishing like I always have. Um, because my family's who makes me who I am. And in order for me to honor my family, I've got to have some kind of avenue. Um, and, and Kevin's heard me many, many times. I go fishing and I don't care if there's a fish in the water I'm at sometimes. <laughs> I just want to go. Uh, and yep. I enjoy it. It's, 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 that, it's that release of soaking those lines. Right. And, yep. and throughout that and being so prevalent of a fisherman, uh, and fishing so hard and spending so much time. Uh, Kevin, I'll tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm on the lake twice a week. You know, one, one time during the middle of the week, I'll take a break and, and go fishing, and I'll be right back that Saturday. So uh, I'm constantly taking the temperature of the fish in the lakes that we fish pretty regular. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, not only that is uh, some of my kinfolks, one of my kinfolks is uh, – a uh, professional bass fisherman. I'm not going to say his name because I hadn't asked whether I could, but uh, he, he lives up there around the lakes that we fish. And he's in, I think this weekend, he's in Alabama next weekend. He may be in Mississippi. I mean, he's all over the place. So he's constantly telling me kind of what's going on on the lakes and what he's seeing. And it just keeps it interesting, keeps me on fire to go fishing. Yeah. That's good. Um. <clears throat> But you also <laughs> do a hey, <laughs> hey, Shelby. <laughs> kind of, kind of screwed that one up a little bit. <laughs> uh, she's, 
She done that on purpose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and 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 the good thing is, is is getting back to kind of like how your life story is, and being that outlaw person, um, and then finding Christ and becoming a pastor and stuff goes back. And and Kevin, I'm guessing you'd be okay with this, but since we're talking sure. about it, goes back to the fishing days in the Bible with the followers yes. of the fishermen out out sea. And Jesus telling them cast their nets one more time. Fisher of me. They were they were outlaws before. <laughs> so and now they're followers. So it's kind of like you're in the same footsteps as they are. And that's it. And and the thing is, uh which one of us that hasn't been sitting in the boat for five or six hours all day and ain't caught a fish hadn't looked up and said, Jesus, which side <laughs> of the boat I need to throw out on? <laughs> yeah. Amen yeah. to that. <laughs> you know, that, the Lord's made a way for me uh, in my job to honor my family, and that's that's why mm. you know, that, fishing and and hunting is a side thing that keeps me regulated. Because if I if I didn't have that little bit of outlet, if a man, the leader of his home and his family, doesn't have some kind of outlet, uh, I don't remember. Do y'all remember uh, growing up? Do y'all remember what a pressure cooker was? A pressure oh. pot. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my grandmother, she would take uh, stinking turnips and junk and put in the things. <laughs> and she would put it on there, and that thing would keep sizzling and, and getting louder and louder and louder until, you know, it was a pressure cooker. And that, yep. that's kind of the way life can be sometimes. Uh, it can be a pressure cooker, and you need a relief valve. Mm -hmm. that's right. yep. BQ, uh, BQ stated that uh, God bless you for being there for those families, uh, speaking on your your. Yep. hospice um your your job uh god bless you for being there for those families i've had the misfortune to have to use hospice for my dad so he understands we um, have to he we, understands used, we used we used it for mom a few years back my uncle uh well and jim will tell you we've had conversations my uncle was under hospice before he passed um and i i feel like that that's a um i feel like that's a, a good um that's a good thing that those that those units are out there for the families and uh and and folks like yourself jim who are able to be an outlet for them um in their yeah. time of need so that's that's awesome um so uh and speaking of of you you know talking about your hunting and your and your fishing and whatnot at one time you had a youtube channel actually uh that you you actually were on the on the youtube as a uh as a hunter i believe it was as a bow hunter I did. Um, I actually got in with a couple of guys that I had an archery business. Uh, I run a, a hunting and fishing store, a small store locally here. That I done archery work, sold bows, arrows, guns, bullets, bait. You know, you name it, the whole thing. Um, but I, I met some guys that were very interested in in. Uh, me filming my hunts because what I was doing is I would film my hunts for myself just so mm -hmm. I could watch them over and over again. And I do that with the fishing. That's how, you know, y'all have seen me on uh, KB Anglers. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, it gives me something when I can't get away from work or I'm sitting there at home and, you know, I've got to do life, so to speak. I can sit there and, and relive that and, and that gets me by and really and truly what it does is just build stokes the fire and makes me want to go fishing even more but <laughs> self mutilation if you want to know the truth but there you go yeah you know, I, I fell in with those guys <laughs> and, uh, i started giving them videos and they started a whole series of hunting shows uh with me and a couple other guys and, and we just traveled around and i shot you know, bow hunted primarily. My show was a bow hunting only channel, and and that was back in the heyday, I guess, of what you say YouTube. It was pretty early in mm -hmm. in YouTube where people weren't just making money and doing all this with YouTube. They were doing it because it was fun and it was more relaxed. And uh, what we had was this guy had the hub basically, and uh, he had set it up to where all of the he had five or six shows running under his YouTube. Um, so basically I got paid in, in bows and guns and um, basically things that uh, you would hunt with. I got paid in deer stands and hunting trips and 
just things like that. And that's, that's kind of what I done. I didn't want any money. Um, it yeah, wasn't yeah. a job to me and I didn't want it to become one, you know, mm -hmm. But during during some of the shows that you did, you and I've had these conversations uh, about that. During some of the shows, you were actually um, teaching and being informative about um, you know about what you know about bow hunting in general and and other and other avenues uh, having to do with hunting. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of where um, uh, where you and I are right now, concerning with what. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Jim actually, uh, as he just spoke, Jim. Um, actually uh films some of his fishing and i i actually put them on to my channel you can actually go back or go to my channel later on and uh in some of my videos and see where he's been out um been out fishing and and what he does um he can be a little bit you know informative whenever he's out there um we haven't mm -hmm. quite got to that point where we're being real informative but that brings us back to what the tonight's show was uh or what it's about rather um I just wanted you guys, uh, you, none of you knew who Jim was other than uh, somebody that comes into the chats. Um, you've heard me talk about him. Um, he is uh, he is my brother in arms, so to speak, uh, when it comes to uh, fishing as well as, and I'll go ahead and say it, Jim, as well as my spiritual leader in some regards, um, because of his background in um, uh, as a pastor. Um, for those that didn't know, Pop was that beforehand, and that has been passed on to Jim, and I thank him for that. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into tonight's um, topic and talking about how the weather affects fishing. Um, <clears throat> what has been your experience? Well, let's just go. Let's just let's just jump back uh, about a month or so ago when the water or uh, when the temp, the outside temp, got down into the single digits. How did that affect the fishing on the waters and that that we fish in? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it even further back than that. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit deeper question um, sure. than what people realize. And one thing that people ask me all the time is how do you go to the lake? How are you catching all these big fish? We fish up there all the time. We don't catch these giant catfish. You know? And my answer is always the same. Whatever you want to do well, do it often. You have to learn. You have to go through that time period of learning. And whether is how it affects the fish, we, you know, I pick it. I'll say this, and y'all heard me say it. Uh, you'll hear me say it a million more times, but I've said it to Kevin. The lakes that I fish, Lake Sinclair and Lake Oconee, they are, I call them a dirty dish bowl <laughs> because there's no current flow. Um, uh, it's minimal at the at the most. Right. Um, I can't speak to fish in these big rivers where they have current and it stays pretty consistent. Whatever happens there is pretty much what it's going to be. Um, our lakes can be because all of our river system is coming from north. It's coming. It, it's going to be colder. So in the winter time, what we need to understand is our lake can change as soon as they open a gate just that fast and just that fast catfish love dirty dishes <laughs> <laughs> that's miss carrie <laughs> but, uh, husbands don't but, <laughs> but uh, no us three up here don't no <laughs> but the biggest thing that is is learning where you fish and where you have the opportunity to fish and being so much of a fisherman throughout my life and, and hunting and fishing so much that I've learned a lot by listening to other people and growing up, that was how I learned. Mm -hmm. uh, but fishing the lake so much and being so successful uh, at catching bigger catfish. And, and the thing is, even I still get humbled. There's days the past three weeks that I, I fished, it just kept getting worse. And I told Kevin it was getting worse and worse and worse. And somebody asked me the other day, why, why do you think it was getting so, why it got, it went from being really good uh, to being able to locate a big fish and catch them and, you know, mm -hmm. catch numbers of fish to just going down to nothing. And I told them what I have learned over the years is this, it's all about fate. And y'all know that. I've heard y'all mm -hmm. talk about it before. 
Yeah. But what happens is in our lakes that we fish, the water will be stable. It's kept stable all the time. As soon as those computers read the river and see all that water coming from up north, that just say we get five, four or five inches of rain, and the temperature up there is a lot colder. Well, as soon as that water starts running down and that computer opens a gate and lets it in the lake and opens the other end and starts letting that water out, we have current flow. It, it, these fish are set up and, and have adapted to this you know, dirty dish water <laughs> has no movement and all of a sudden the gates open. So what does that do to the fish? Well, years ago, you, people used to say, well, it makes the fish bite. You know, it moves stuff around. It makes them get active. That may be true on hybrid. It mm -hmm. ain't true for catfish. I can tell mm -hmm. you. Uh, what it does, it shocks the bait fish. Wherever they are, most time in warm weather, your, your shad and your bait fish are going to be up in the creeks. Uh, that's where they're going to stay. Your catfish, uh, it can get to the point where your bigger catfish just can't get up uh, to feed actively on shad. And another thing happens. We have freshwater mussels that is in the summertime in our lakes are the primary food source for our catfish. Right. And people don't even realize it. They don't even think about it. Um, and that's one reason chicken is such a, a good bait um, between August, September, October, before it really gets cold and that cold water hits the lake. But as soon as that cold water hits the, our lakes, those shad move out of those creeks because what happens in the wintertime to shad? They die. Mm -hmm. Cold weather kills them. So what do they have to do? They have to run to deep water. The problem right. is if they go to deep water, everything eats them. Yep. Yeah. So as soon as that the, those shad run out in deep water, there's scores of them dying in that process. They're not surviving between hybrids in our lakes and stripers and bass, catfish hitting them. They're constantly dying. The cold temperatures, rain, that pushes them down. What happens? Mm -hmm. Shad get pushed deeper. They get eat more. So what we had have happened in our lakes in the past four weeks is super cold weather, a ton of rain, that cold water coming into the lake, forcing the shad into deep water. And those catfish where we were just living the good life, catching all these catfish. Now, those catfish, if you catch one, his belly is gorged. Right. Those fish are setting up under shad. And now you can put chicken or something like down there. They'll just ignore it. Yep. Mm -hmm. They don't pay any attention. And you can put a shad head down there. And you may catch a fish here or there. But they're not starving. They're not mm -hmm. active. And, you know, I, I had all kinds of reasons why I thought it was for a long time until I started really, really using electronics. So I went from saying, you know, this is what's happening and listen to all these old tales, you know, to yeah. knowing what's actually taking place. Yeah. And that just comes from experience, being on the water um, and just putting time in. Well, we know, we know that pressure – um, there was uh, barometric pressure can uh, cause a um, you know cause, cause a rift in fishing regardless um, and I and I because of that knowledge I, I know that when we have some of the storms that we've had in our area especially um, <clears throat> you know it's it puts a lot of pressure on that uh, lake and you and I've talked about this as well um, how that they'll go, They'll go deep and, and but they're lethargic when they do this because they're just they're mm -hmm. hurting. Um, there's so much pressure being uh, exuded onto their bodies um, that they're hurting. They're not wanting to eat. It's like if you had a if you had a toothache, you wouldn't want to eat anything either, you know, because it's hurting. It's throbbing. You're, you're hurting. Um, so I, I know that when when storms and, and the, the funny thing about that is is right before a storm and Jim, you you and I've been on the water in both occasions. You know, right before the storm, the fishing was good. Just as the storm comes in, it dies off quickly. And then about an hour after the storm has passed, the 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 um, the fishing picks back up. And that's any time of the year that we're fishing. 
Mm. Um, and that's and, fact, and that, and that usually what, pertains to larger fish. Now, creek fish, no. Yeah. Creek fish yeah, takes well, a lot longer, a lot longer for it to settle down and for them to be back active again because uh, I showed well, Jim the, yeah, I showed Jim the little video of the of the flooded river, uh, creek we had. That creek didn't settle back down for almost four days. It yeah. was still rolling that fast for four days after the rain has stopped. So for creek fish, that's totally different. I mean, it's that pressure that that current. They're they're hit up underneath the ledges and the on the edge of the banks holding on because or they're swept down they're following the current because they're swept down even farther because it's rolling too fast for them that's right well you know we had um back and i can't jim you might have to help me with this and i can't remember the exact date of it but we had a an earthquake actually hit our lake um i mean just about dead center of our lake uh, it was a 9.9 magnitude not 9.9 it was a <laughs> Three point, I said nine point nine because of somebody. Something somebody said. Uh, um, it was a three like point. Boat motor. Nine point yeah. nine. <laughs> probably mm-hmm. what it was. Um, it was a three point. I can't remember what it was. Three point one. Three point. Three point one. Anyways, it was, it was like a three point one or three something. Anyways, magnitude uh, earthquake, which is a mild earthquake, but it was enough to shake up the lake. And and for what a week, nobody caught anything at that time. Isn't that about right? Mm-hmm. And, and the really and truly, the biggest thing is what I've noticed in fishing is change. Mm-hmm. Anytime yes. those fish, those fish are just like we are. We come into the, our house and we have that thermostat set. We, we're comfortable. We'll yep. eat at the same times. We'll do our same things. But you introduce freezing cold into my house, I'm going to be upset. Yep. Uh, and my yep. wife will be dead. She can't. <laughs> She can't handle that. Nope. <laughs> at 90 degrees, she's cold. But so <laughs> what it does, it shocks those fish and they have to get regulated. And what they're looking for is where do I need to go to be comfortable? Mm-hmm, and the right. bait has to do that. But they have to, big catfish and fish in general have to follow the bait. They're going to be where, where bait is. Mm-hmm. Um, but if that water gets cold, super cold, or like you know the earthquake or whatever anything that introduces change is a shock Mm -hmm. to them they have to adapt to it and their primary goal before eating is to get comfortable Uh, they're going to go as deep as they need to they're going to go where the oxygen is Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize it talk about uh you know thermocline in the summertime but Mm -hmm. you also have to realize in the winter time oxygen levels are different in deeper water and those fish are having to go deep because they're the they're having to get away from those cold, super cold temperatures as those right. water temperatures drop yeah. so let me let me ask you this jim because i mean you've 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 studied it you've been there and, and you've kind of know what how the fish are kind of acting and stuff how is changing of the environment from man-made uh changes due to the fishing like introducing new roads and introducing things like that or um, erosion, things like what man are doing to the land. How, how does that usually sometimes affect the waters? Well, I'm going to say anything. Anytime you add structure to a fish, if you've ever had chickens, if you put something down in front of a chicken, they're going to go all over inside, flip it upside down, mm-hmm. pick all up under. Yep. Fish are <laughs> yep. They're going to if you enter oh, yeah. structure. It's 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 like an FBI agent on a on a piece of evidence. <laughs> they're going to utilize it because bait fish are going to use it to hide in. The fish mm-hmm. are going to find it. Um, now river systems. Uh, one of the big problems we have, you know, growing up on the rivers years ago when I was younger, you could fly up and down the river because you know they still dredged the rivers. They kept mm-hmm. them clean, and now the river systems don't seem to be priority to the States anymore. So you go down the river and, and Kevin, I took him in my river boat down. Uh, it's actually not mine. It, it was uh, a friend of mine's that we kind of went in together, but we, we have a boat together, a river boat. And uh, it's a straight up river boat. I mean, I went down the river and we tie lines and I still, you know, uh, fish the river out of it, but you can't, 
you can't just fly down the rivers down here anymore because there's nobody out there seeing to the rivers. Like if I want to fish a slough or go up in a slough, um, if I want the tree out of it so I can get my boat through there, I have to bring a chainsaw. It's up to me if I want to get back there or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and years ago, uh, the states kind of took care of that because they utilized the river still. Yeah. Now it's just it's just a, it's just mud with water running in it. You know they don't they don't care anymore. But um, the people are what keep the fishermen are what keeps our rivers going yeah. uh, down here now. But yeah, anytime you introduce structure or change, uh, the fish are going to utilize it. Um, but it, as far as it affecting the the way fish bite, um, like say you throw a car tire in the river, something's going to be living in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I know exactly how that is. Yes, but I pulled up a fifty true. pound. I pulled up a, uh, <laughs> a white wall tire uh, weighed about fifty pounds with an anchor. Yeah, I know exactly how that is. <laughs> what was living in it? One of the neatest things that I have ever seen is you know the active target stuff that i mean you were picking on me i think i was in the comments one night you were talking about it was cheating and i love it i love to cheat like that because it <laughs> what it done it took me from uh guessing and saying well this is what the fish are doing this is what the fish are doing mm -hmm. and because of these all these weather conditions and changes uh i was wrong <laughs> you know? yeah. And now I know for a fact that I was wrong on some of these things because I can literally watch the fish react to the different baits and different weather conditions. Yeah. Um, three weeks ago, I was out there fishing and I, I caught 18 um, fish um, and was just catching them hand over fist. And I was catching them on uh, chicken and uh, cut bait. And uh, I could put two rods down with cut bait, two with chicken, and the fish would come to the chicken and wouldn't even hesitate. Boom, they had it. The the shad heads, the bluegill heads, anything, any cut bait, it was just instant. They grabbed it. And they were schools of, they'd be a group of six catfish in that 10 to 18, 20 pound range, and they'd come by in schools, and they were constantly swimming and moving. They never sat still. A week later, those fish were kind of lethargic. They were slowed down. There weren't as many grouped up together. They would look at the bait. They'd kind of hit the bait with their tail a time or two. They'd circle the bait like a buzzard for a little while. And then they'd finally eat it. A week after that, and that colder water come in, stop. Nothing. It didn't matter what bait you put down, how big it was, how small yeah. it was. These fish were gorged on that because mm -hmm. that cold water come in and all those shad in that deep water, it killed them. And you had all these shad going to the bottom. You can see, you know, 30 pound blues laying on the bottom, but you can't do anything about it. Now literally you dropped the bait down to them and the fish backed up and swam away from it. <laughs> I see, I seen video of that that you sent me. Yeah. yeah. Following this fish around saying, do you want to eat? Uh, try this. I was, I was, I was fitting to start putting Cheetos on the hook. I was trying to <laughs> that's, that's the point when people say, when you put it right on their nose and they don't bite, they ain't going to bite nothing. Right. You can have all the electronics in the world. It will put you on fish. It will teach you uh, where fish are and how to find them. How their behavior is. Yep. But you can't pry their mouth. Open. Nope. Nope. No. Well, you know, um, in, in, you know, talking in this regard with our waters, um, you know, we mainly, like you said, we mainly fish the lakes. And, of course, any lake, regardless, um, you know, that, that's dammed up is, is like you said, a, to a certain degree of standing water. Now, the, the funny part about all that is the further up north you go, where in your river systems, you know, you constantly got uh, water running and those waters are staying fairly consistent to a certain degree. But they still get cold because it does obviously get colder up north than it does down here. Um, but yet at the same time, they run through um they they'll run through and um and still hit the baits, unlike I mean it's it's very rare that you don't catch anything up north uh in your northern waters during the colder months. I mean, it's you know, you're you're able to catch 
Um, I've been seeing like J Dog, and I've been seeing you know Bob, you know Bobcat, and and um, uh, who all Cody else? and all them Cody, Cody from three plus one, yeah. and um, you know they've been out there and in, in freezing weather, <laughs> bundled up, about to freeze their, their butt yeah. off, and they're catching fish, but they're in in moving consistent water. And that's what you were talking about earlier. There's no there's no consistency when we're in the lakes. Well, Cody and them are not. Cody and them are on a their their lake is not it's, it, there's no current at all, but they're they know they they're like Jim they they know their waters pretty much to a T they know pretty much how the water is going to be year round they know how to fish it mm-hmm. and they and their electronics is what helps them to basically learn where it's all at where they're at where they're moving to. And that's and that's what electronics, uh, like Active Target, done for me. It, I can go out there when nobody else is catching fish a lot of times, and I can find a fish, and I can eventually talk him into maybe eating, and I can still produce a fish here or there. Mm-hmm. But there's still days that you're just going to have, you're going to get skunked, um, even with all the electronics that we have. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it... it, it I've learned more in the winter time. I used to be big on uh, dragging Santee rigs um, mm-hmm. in the lake. And I have went almost completely away from it in the winter time because I have watched these fish and I can tell when it's going to be good and when it's not. If I drop my active target scope and I look and I put a bait down, and I see fish just suspended, not moving, and they're not active. I'm I'm not going to drag baits on fish that just aren't active. I'd rather I'd rather find structure and mm-hmm. find big fish in in and around that structure and offer baits to them consistently, rather than just covering ground. And our lake, uh, you know, it just seems to work better as far as big fish. Yeah, see, and it's me with when I fish with Larry and Cody from Three Plus One. It's 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 more of we're better when we're dragging than we are anchored. Yeah, yeah, and it, and I think that's I think that's more in line with um the type with the lake that you fish or the lakes that mm. you fish. Um, like like Wally, for instance. Um, you know there there's some over on Lake Wally that you know that's all they do is drag baits. Um, and then there are those that, <clears throat> that will go out there and, you know, they're truly targeting They're they're sitting up on the points and they're sitting up on the, um, you know, on the, on the ledges and such as that. Well, and I mean, we them. are too. I mean, you could do that dragon too. Cause that's what we're, we're doing. We're dragging, we're dragging the flats. We're dragging the, right. the ledge going down. We're dragging the deeps. We're the shallows. I mean, we're, we usually when I'm out with them, they have, they're spread out 40 feet wide in the back almost. Right from one, from one side to the other. I mean, we're so spread out to where we're covering every basis that we can going down the river, yeah. around the lake. And now, uh, and another thing with with the lakes that we fish, Oconee and Sinclair, they're party lakes. If you want to yeah. use a term, yeah. if you spread out a forty foot spread in Lake Sinclair and Lake Oconee, you're going to have so a much and a jet ski wrapped up in a spider web of your line. And See, that's that's that's, that's the problem with my lake here, Lake Cumberland. That's you, everybody knows what Lake Cumberland is during during the uh, summers and the holidays is pleasure boaters. Yeah, it pleasure is. Boaters. It, that's the reason why I stay off the lake during major holidays is because it's just so dangerous out there. Mm-hmm. There's so yes. many pleasure boaters from everywhere coming down here. But I'll I'll, I'll tell you this. What got me started targeting fish and suspending baits right on top of them were I have learned to use structure because since I've got the scope, active target has changed a tremendous amount about how I I fish. I used to fish points and ledges and, and I would find structure on side scan, but now through using side scan, finding the structure, mm-hmm. and then being able to literally see the shadows off of big fish. If I don't see a, a shadow off of a big fish, I don't even stop and put the scope down. What mm-hmm. I'll do is I'll waypoint that fish, and I'll see that shadow being cast by that side imaging. And once I see, I know that's a big fish, because a small fish doesn't leave a shadow that's five foot long. No. <laughs> 
So I know that's a big fish. So what I want to do is identify that fish. So I waypoint that fish, spin the boat around, go back to him, and I drop the scope. And once I put my eyes on that fish, I can literally see his whiskers. I know mm -hmm. that's either a big flathead or big blue, and I'm going to offer baits to him. And that's what I've, uh, I've learned to do. Now, mm -hmm. if those fish are super, super active and not staying on structure, that's when I'll start just say I can't keep up with that fish because he keeps going out of the scope. He's constantly moving. That's when I'll throw out my, you know, my planer boards and I'll drag. I'll drag that area. Um, but our fish are more structure oriented in these lakes that don't have air flow. Mm -hmm. um, they're and not moving as often. And that's one of the things too that the, um, that, that, um, live scope uh, allowed us to see well allowed you i haven't actually been on the boat with you but i've seen some of your little clips that you've sent me is that we now know what's on the bottom of the of our lake absolutely i mean and, and, and especially right where you well even i've called you know the big the biggest fish i've caught on sickler of course at this point is 30 but it's gonna get bigger um but um you know, I now know as well as Jim, who's caught bigger fish in that area, in the same area that I call that 30. We now know the whole reason why and why during what part of the year, why? Uh, because it allowed us to see that structure. I'd heard all kind of tales for years and years, you know, I mean, grew up on that lake, fished it. Uh, we used to spend all night on that lake white perch fishing under lights. And I uh, always heard, you know, there's there's concrete under here. There's an old bridge here. None of that was true. It was just yeah. trees. Um, and as soon as I got electronics where I could actually see that. And hey, Miss Jody, by the way, I saw you uh, your comment there. Um, but I I'll show you. This is a, a picture on my phone. I know it's probably hard to see. But uh, I'll tell you about structure if I can it's get it. Really hard to see. That's probably going to be hard to see. But uh, there you yeah. go. But uh, that's a bridge. And I caught that 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 blue at that bridge, and you can't drag that area. If you drag that area, there is so much rebar and concrete. Well, and not just that, all the trash and everything else that gets swept down there during the storms and stuff that's hung up on the pillars and everything else. Oh, yeah. And all the bigger fish in our lakes, and I, and I'm saying this very lightly because you know i've caught big fish you know out in the middle of nowhere where there was no structure in the summertime where the fish are more active mm -hmm. uh, those fish are just moving when they come off the spawn them things are like rockets they're cruising from one side end of the lake to the other they're active that's why in august our lake sinclair is the place to be for a big blue um in august it is on you can catch them on chicken. I believe you can catch them on a sour donut. I mean, <laughs> they're just going to eat in August every year without fail. Uh, and Hot people dog. Me all the time. When do we need to go try to catch a big catfish? Well, in August. You know, yep. you can catch one on a stinking hot dog. You know? <laughs> it's got to have a really strong, uh, really uh, sharp knife. Yeah, um, that's the inside joke. <laughs> you know, you know, and that's one thing I've learned is in our lakes, and I can't speak to other. I don't, I fish, fished the Tennessee River one time and it was a bust. I, I, I was you so immature. Was, you got busted. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I fell at the boat ramp and almost drowned. So, yeah, literally. You know, it, yeah. It was, uh, it was an experience and learning experience. And I figured out when I left that everybody said, man, you needed to be at the dam. All the fish are at the dam this time of the year. I thought, well, that would have been information to know ahead of time, but exactly learn experience. But in our lakes, it's all about structure. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, our fish, the big fish that I catch nearly without fail, I always catch them on structure. And yeah. Kevin, I'll tell you, when I hang into a big fish, a lot of times I lose them. But yeah. because I'm fishing in treetops and structure, and and it's just so thick a structure. What I'm well, and, and they and they tell you that if you're if you're not getting hung up while you're fishing, you're not fishing for the <laughs> right so fish. Big. Yeah, if you are if you're targeting big fish and you're not getting hung up, you're not fishing the right way. Now here's something that uh that Carrie just just mentioned, and it and it's uh, you know since we're on this subject. Um, and and this is how I grew up um, 
as well. And you all know this. We, you've heard me talk about this. Um, Kerry states that here in Oklahoma, I just watch the birds in the winter. I fish the center of the channel and they always hit. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to um, something that Pop and I uh, started doing before we started getting big into the electronics um, was watching your birds, watching your uh, your eddies, if there is any at all, um, you know, what, you know, watching, um, you know, just, just basically watching nature and it'll tell you quickly. I mean, even if, when I say nature, I'm talking about, you know, you can see the shad just rippling the water, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's feeding prey of, you know, fish of some sort feeding on the, on yeah. these, on these shad. And it's funny um, you brought that up right then, because, you know, in August, that's the biggest giveaway in August for where the big fish are is wherever yeah. you see, uh, I can't remember what they call. Uh, some people call them diet appers or whatever, but Lake Sinclair and Lake Oconee is full of them in mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And wherever you see them, they'll be in, you know, 40, 50 foot of water. And you're like, well, why is there birds, you know, hanging out in 50 foot of water, you know, on top of the water. Yeah. But it's because there's so much activity under them. They're, mm -hmm. The fish are so active. Uh, it's pushing shad, and you'll see shad, like you say, Kevin, you know, a lot of times right at dark uh, around the power lines, you'll see shad coming up out of the water in August yep. uh, because they're just being hammered and attacked by everything. Mm -hmm. and, Especially uh, loons. Or now, is that what you're now, talking about? Now I'm talking about the birds. You're talking about the birds. Now you got to watch the birds, how they act. Yep. That's the biggest thing because they'll give you a sign if – there's if they're feeding or there's resting yep if they're resting go away just go away just go away move away from them because they're not there's nothing there they're just resting but if they're actively trying to catch bait their food then you know there's fish around them it's kind of a way every time i drive by and see kevin in his boat fishing <laughs> he's resting he ain't doing nothing oh he never does <laughs> he's, 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 he's doing this. He's doing I'll this. this. He where, where, where's, where's my camera? He's doing this. <laughs> big ones now. Yeah. I'm he's either the on the phone with Jim or on the phone with Catman or <laughs> he's on the phone with somebody. I can't help that I'm a popular Missing guy. the rod go down. <laughs> I have had that happen before, don't I? <laughs> What's up, Cat Tucky? Mm. Well, I know uh, he's talking about how the birds act, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey Kelly. I was looking at something else. Um, so yeah, talking about the loons also in the water. I uh, I was out with a, another buddy of mine uh, about a year or two ago, and uh, Pop wasn't able to go with me, so my buddy um, decided to go with me. And we're out there, and we're we're literally I'm in a I'm in an area that I've never fished before. I don't know the area. I haven't really scoped it out, but I figured what the hey, we'll go ahead and we'll fish it. Well, while we're out there. I decided to drag, you know, drag baits. I mean, I know enough about it. So, you know, naturally I'm going to drag baits to see if I can pick up anything. And we're having no luck. I mean, none. And then I got to noticing that um, there was a bunch of loons, in, you know, had come into the area and they were, you know, just kind of lighting into the water. And all of a sudden you'd see one disappear and then it'd come up and, you know, and then all of a sudden another one would disappear. I mean, it was like a congregation of these loons, you know, across the water. And because of the knowledge that I had passed on to me from Pop about how to watch the birds and, and, and uh, like you were saying, uh, Kelly, uh, how to read them, I realized that I'm in the wrong area, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I changed tactics, changed directions and, and went in the direction of where the loons and, and the birds were because uh, some of the uh, seagulls started coming up in that direction at the same time. And um and we're hitting the water and diving and, and everything into the water. And so I, I changed everything up and started coming through that area. And we started catching fish and we had, a, you know, had a good day of doing so. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just by the, just by watching, you know, watching your 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 birds and, and how they interacted on the water. And like you were talking about, too, later that afternoon in that same area uh, with the birds still there uh, being active we saw the water rippling because there was so much shad in the area. And, and that's how, how I knew that, you know, we were in a good spot that day. And uh, I can literally watch those birds now because I, I was sitting there fishing in 40 foot of water. Not long ago. <laughs> it looked like a missile on my thunder mm -hmm. boat. <laughs> and I was looking at it on the active target, you know, the scope. And it looked just like a little missile <laughs> going up under the boat. Uh, what in the world kind of fish is that? Because the, them things are actually quicker than the fish are. Yeah, you know, right. 
Yeah, wow, that's crazy. crazy. You see this blip go across, you know, my goodness. And then he pops up, and that's when it took me an hour to realize that's what it was. I was like, man, there's some hybrids chasing Chad down there, and it wasn't. It was those birds going yep. under the water chasing Chad. That's right. See, that, that, be, that would be a video definitely to have is be able to see Work that on scope. I see. I was going to try to record it on my HDS live, but I was scared nobody'd believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here seeing birds chase well, your head and You like, could put it out as says, "What do you think it is?" Nate, you always put it out there. What do you think this is? Do it next. You know. Time you know what it footage. is. Do it next. There's going to be there's going to be people out there that don't know exactly what it is. I mean, a lot of us know <laughs> these birds are quick, especially when yes, they get they underneath are. that water. They are actually are very, very quick. That's how they get a hold of them. Yeah. They're, well, they're more successful than Kevin a lot of times. <laughs> well, you he, know, his, in, in, he has he has to he has to sit there and hit, it's like it takes probably what about five, ten seconds for your brain to react to a pole going down. <laughs> I find it if he, I pay attention. I know what it is. It's like uh Hey, hey, Jim. Let me let me put you down for a second. Uh, uh, uh pose bone. Uh, 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 okay, I got it. <laughs> I like when he uh, he, I'll be on the phone with him or or something like that, and I'm, or a pole goes down, and he's over there playing musical poles. He's grabbing <laughs> every rod but the right one. Yes, it's the one that's about to break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or he's he's got the he's got the the rod in his hand, but then he's playing musical rods because now he's got the rod and he's kind of go over this way, over this way. Just pick one direction for the fish to go into. It's not me picking the fish, picking the direction. The the cats are the ones picking the well, direction. If you would if you would reel it in, you could you could make it go a direction. Okay, you, 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 like quit playing with it. Quit playing with your food. I like when he calls me because every time he calls me, I wind up catching a forty or forty plus pound fish every time he calls me. So he, he, ain't, got, he ain't got nothing. He ain't got think, nothing to say about big blues. That, hey, listen, you brought in that one big blue, and it comes still bigger the than yours. Off, off still bigger than yours. Direction. But I want still to see you catch that same big blue and it being active as those flatheads that I had. Uh, that went did one you, side not, of the did you not watch the video water. where his tail came up out of that water and smacked it and went straight back down again? That's but it's in the it's same direction. Active. I'm going from one direction over to the other. Well, you, just, so, you just don't know how to bring it in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Matt, no. Matt, you ain't got nothing to say. You sat on a boat with a great fisherman, and you let him catch a big fifty or whatever sixty something pound fish, and you didn't catch squat. So don't, you ain't got nothing to say, Matt. Mr. Matt was be the water. He was having fun. And so he was no he, he was he was sitting there just going for the ride. He had he has nothing to say on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> now, What's up, squirrel? A, I'm gonna say there's there's a guy right there. That knows all about that stuff and, and 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 knows how to go out and oh he and, oh yeah he he had he had to correct me yeah 88 and it was it, <laughs> i was just having fun i yep. told you matt was just having it could have been was, yours matt matt was it could have be been yours water matt was happy to be on the water because he had not been on the water in so long so he didn't know what I, water looked like I, he didn't know what water looked like on that one <laughs> Yeah, but that's a flathead. You can't you can't compare a flathead to a blue. I'm sorry, it just you cannot cannot Matt, compare them. Cannot compare them. Matt, I'm in agreement with you right there, buddy. Because mine's bigger than his too. <laughs> because I don't have one. I don't have a flathead yet. Because I've not targeted flatheads yet. <laughs> Anyways, since we I had, were... a, I had an old man tell me one time I was at a store up there getting bait and I was showing off pictures. This was back when I was fishing the river, you know, putting lines out, and I'd caught like a 68-pound flathead, biggest one I had about ever caught. You know, I walked up, this old man was showing him a picture. It was a literal film picture, you know, back then. He looked at me dead in the face and said, boy, I use bait bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the store laughed at me, and I, 
I, I just stayed away from that old man. He's about 74 years old, you know, 74, 75. I just said, <laughs> you got my respect, brother. I ain't full of it. Well, Carrie said, Carrie, you did the same thing. Carrie said she wants to fish with me. No, you don't. No, you don't, Carrie. No, he'll push you over. Trust me. No. Ask, ask his wife in the bed beside him. <laughs> He will he will block you like a football player to get to a rod. Uh-uh. Stop it. Hey, I've let him on my boat before. He's bad luck. It'll take three months to get that, that down out of your boat to get back where you catch fish again. So don't, but, don't. yeah, he's, Jim, he's he, 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 he asked Jim from Catman, he's he's bad luck. <laughs> but see, Jim, what you don't understand is is that Kerry would be on my boat. So my boat so, carries good luck. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, <laughs> your your boat is jinxed. <laughs> she carries. She, she'll make sure she brings her kayak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, and that would be funny. That would be funny if 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 Carrie's on her kayak right beside Kevin on his boat, and she was catching fish, and, and Kevin wasn't. That'd, I'd that'd be hilarious. I tell you what, that is especially if she was catching bigger fish than I was. Um, and that seems to be my luck a lot of times. I was I was literally on one side of a cove. I mean, a little short mouth cove at that. I mean, we the the, the other fisherman that was across from me, mm-hmm. um, we were having a conversation more or less across the way from each other. We have he has a bait in the in the mouth of the of the uh, cove that we were sitting in. I've got the same, you know, and there was and we're using cut bait. I've got bait sitting in about the same area. We both have our rods go down at the same time. Mm -hmm. I bring in a 12-pound blue. He brings in the biggest fish of the tournament, which was a 60-something pound blue, and they both went down at the same time. I'm like, why couldn't that hit mine? I mean, we were Why couldn't I have that rod? Why couldn't I have that rod? Exactly, you know? And we were, like, that close to each other, man. It was crazy. Kevin, living right. No. I must not have had my mouth right or something. Oh, here oh, you go. <laughs> oh, Jody got funny. I have to say, I Jody will just you if ever if everything works out by next week, six days from now, I will be able to target a lot more fish, flatheads definitely. And I'll, show you why. and I'll show you why. Are you going to, all right, you're fixing to jinx it. No. I okay. think I might still illegal, Kevin. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. That is why. Is that the one you were telling me about? This is the one that I am looking at this weekend. Okay. Wait, that's not the same one then? No. That's, that's, the other, that one's almost uh, a little too high now already. Ah, I got you. That boat's so nice, fish is going to be just jumping up, waving white flag. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah. Like the seeds. Yeah. <laughs> They're comfortable so that I can be sitting on my phone talking to Jim while I'm fishing. <laughs> I, I, hey, and I'll probably be on the phone with Kevin while I'm fishing. <laughs> right. And, oh, hey, while you're at work, I'll be fishing. I oh, know. <laughs> Sucks. That's what that was. That's what makes tomorrow so bad. I was supposed to be. I had actually planned on going fishing tomorrow with a buddy, with the same buddy I was just talking about all ago, and um, he he done hit me up about wanting to take his pontoon out since he had got the new motor on it and hadn't had nobody to go out on the uh, on the lake with him. And I was like, sure, I'll do that. And then I had a monkey wrench. Actually, I had I think the whole monkey with wrenches jump, you know, jump into my uh, business and. That got that shut down. Well, your so, whole weekend got shut down. Well, that was the beginning. That that's the start. I'm talking about. I'm talking about tomorrow got shut yeah. down. That was made plans. Um, the plans were actually made Sunday night, and then as of yesterday, all everything got shut down, where I couldn't even go tomorrow. Yeah. So, so, so for those that haven't really heard, because we really haven't much, said much of it, and we kind of did a little bit. Kevin's not going to CatCon. No. Nope. Kevin's plans got canceled this weekend because uh, his boss decided uh, he's going to have surgery on the weekend that or the week that he is going to be at CatCon. Yep. So, well, not only that, even if I, even if that hadn't took place, 
had, in other words, I'm just, uh, there's, you know, there's woulda, coulda, shoulda, um, you know, with what's going on right now, um, yeah. which I haven't really touched that much on with you, Kelly, but Jim yeah. knows a lot about it because he's trying to help me out. But yeah. um, that within itself would have canceled it right there, no. you know. And um, I, I hate the fact that we're not going to make CatCon because I think it would have been a great year to go. Uh, especially with uh, with us being uh, with us planning on going together, mm -hmm. um, you know, representing the show tonight. Uh, I think it would have been great, but I hate the fact that we're not going to go. Um, Carrie states that she wants to go to CatCon next year, so I think start making we're, plans we're, now. I was going to say, I think <laughs> start making do plans is, now is, for it. Carrie, you don't make, make plans a year ahead of time, you won't go. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie needs to go ahead and start making her plans. And we'll go ahead and start making our preliminary plans because I would like to be able to go uh, like we had discussed. Hopefully things will be a lot better for us at that point. And then we'll just all meet up and we'll share fish stories. <laughs> yep. I'm still, I'm still right now I'm on the fence of going right now. So we're still, cause I was going to go up Friday and meet J dog Friday night. Yeah. Stay at his house and then go on with him Saturday morning. Now, I've got to work Friday and company called and says, Hey, we're going to have an inventory audit nice. on your product Saturday morning. Good Lord. So now I got to stay here in town, do that. So I am probably, if I, if I got the green light, I am going to leave as soon as that's done, pack my stuff up for one night and I'm heading up and I've got a room with the one tonners and LG bass for the night. So that'll be that'll be neat to be able to. That way, I don't have to drive all the way up there and the drive back in the same night because that's just that's going to be a lot of driving for me to drive up and drive back the same night. Well, at least one half of the team will be able to go up there. So do what I said. At least one half of the team will be able to go yeah. up there. So that's that's a plus. And I didn't want to bother Jim and them because the situation Jim's going through right now, uh, Kentucky Cat Man. Uh, I didn't want to deal with stuff that's going on with him. Um, don't know if you heard, but that got worse. Yeah. I haven't heard anything else since we talked. Yeah, I'll let you know a little bit more about that. Okay. It got worse. Okay. So, um, but, yeah, and, and, but we'll just put it this way: keep, keep, keep Jim uh, Kentucky Catman in your prayers, him and his family. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll kind of leave it at that right now. And we'll leave it at that at the moment because he's not he's not made it public, and I don't want to make no. it public. But he's no, going through yeah. something that not without him make being exactly. here to do it. Um, yeah, he's going through something that we all eventually have to go through at the moment. And, at any given time, and um, let's just say that he, he could use our prayers. So, yeah, absolutely does. Barry Collins says, Jim, hey, brother. <laughs> That's Barry Collins. I used to work with Barry. There you go. Jody says, I'm packing my bags right now. <laughs> Jody, uh, you ain't that much farther south than me than, than Louisville. So, there you go. Unless you're there leaving else. out, unless you're leaving out in the morning. So, well, it looks like we're starting to hemorrhage uh, viewers, and of course, it is after eight o'clock, and we know why yep. that is. Um, everybody can go on over to see Muskrat Adventures uh, yes. and see what's going on with them tonight. They've got, a, they've, got a, they've got a good show going on. They're going to be talking about uh, gear and stuff, and That's rods right. and tackle and everything else. And there you go. So, well, with that being said, uh, Jim, I appreciate you coming on with us tonight. I know you and I have been talking about it, you know, having a show together and, you yeah. know, talk, you know, talk over with the public, you know, what, what you and I generally talk in, you know, when we're together and, you know, over the phone. So I appreciate you coming in and doing that with us tonight. And of course, now that you know how to come into the show at any given time, if you, uh, you know, if you felt like that you wanted to put your two cents worth in and some of the shows that we do in, in the, in the next, uh, upcoming months um just let me know when you can come on into the show um at any given time um everybody that's come in and has stuck with us tonight and uh, through the through the eight o'clock hour uh all six of you i uh, appreciate it <laughs> and we're we're glad that you uh were able to stick around with us um kelly what we got next week or do we uh right now we're still on the fence on next week all right uh, so. i've reached out to a certain uh person um yeah. and i've not heard anything back from them but i will i will give a little hint they are a pretty big deal person do a lot of noodling and hunting mm -hmm. so i wanted to bring them in and kind of give them the 
basically the platform to basically talk about that aspect new, of fishing, how, how, the, the effects on the how they're noodling, how that how they do all that kind of stuff, what yeah. goes into all that kind of stuff. Because that's just that's something that nobody really talks about. It's it's and, it's and what he's and what he's meaning by noodling is not the noodling that a lot of us uh, are thinking about concerning going out there and throwing the the pool like noodles. like like uh, Carrie does fishing. like those the uh, little the her noodles out there and basically the yeah. jugs or anything like that. Like, no, she just or I, I kind of mentioned, but this person actually dives underwater, sticks their hands and feet into the holes of yes. the ground. So. so but if that comes to pass, if it, if, it, if, it, if it if if they reach back, then we'll have this person on. If not, we'll 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 figure an idea. Oh yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we hadn't we hadn't quite gone that far with next week's um, no. platform yet. So. No, because we're still we're still kind of reaching out to the to the people. So that's right. Um, but either way, uh, you guys tune in next week. Uh, the show will be. I might on. have a. Ooh. What? I have backup plan. Oh, okay. We'll discuss that in the short. Um, so <laughs> Carrie says, no, I don't noodle laugh out loud. I just jug. Mm -hmm. I do not dig fish out of holes ever. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, for those of you that are still with us tonight or have come or do come in to watch the show and, and actually watch it all the way through, uh, tune in next week. Um, on and the, the show will be on, uh, Kelly's channel, the bullet experience. Yep. Um, Same on. So, we will be uh, advertising on our social medias. Hey, there you go. Yeah, social media. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we will uh, be advertising that on the social medias that we need. Oh, my God. Here we go. Um, on the social medias. Look, look, right there. <laughs> Fuzzy butt. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyways, uh, Anything else we need to mention before we get out of here? Nope. Uh, three days till CatCon. Nah, so, don't remind me. I don't even want to hear. I, I know. I know more about that. All right. Hey, uh, if I go, we can still do a show. You just do it from home. That's true. We can do that. You, yep. you up there? I can walk around. I can walk around and and show you. We might do that. We might just throw a. We might just do that. Yeah. We so might throw a maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. So if I'm there. Be looking out for a uh, live show from, from CatCon. There you go. All right, Jim, anything else you want to add, bud? No, sir. I'm going fishing. You go fishing, son. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, I, can't, I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. We will see you next week and in the coming uh, in the coming weeks, uh, hopefully. Creek fishing and Thursday. Creek fishing Thursday. There you Creek go. Fishing Thursday. So, yep. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you and your your little pen anyhow we appreciate you coming in thank y'all for uh participating in the chats and listening to uh what i felt like was some fairly good information um and uh we'll see y'all uh next week yeah take care yep <laughs>